I used to think that if I fell or do anything wrong that I have fallen from grace and I felt like I will miss heaven. So it was as if I was in this constant cycle of defeat. It left me in a place of feeling so sin conscious as if I was on this ladder climbing and each time I would fall, it felt like I have gone to the bottom of the ladder to start again. That is a place that a lot of Christians today are walking through because they are under legalism and they are fallen from grace. You have fallen from grace if you try to be justified by the law. Many Christians have been taught that after they have been saved by grace, they need to now keep the law. And when they try keeping the law, they fall deeper into sin. And falling deeper into sin, they are now indicted that they have fallen from grace because they have committed sin. But my question is, what led them to a place of falling into sin in the first place? It is their quest to try and keep the law. How come you were saved by grace and now you need the law to be kept in the place of salvation? And scripture says, you who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. If you try to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. Is it because there's something wrong with the law? No, the law is perfect. But we as humans are not perfect. And the law was not given so that we would be justified by it. The law was given to expose us. And what the law did was it exposed sin in us. It shows us that we need a savior. And Paul elaborated that in Romans chapter 7. When he said, when I want to do the right thing, I could not. But when I don't want to do something wrong, I find myself doing that. Why? Because there is sin in me. And when the law came, the law exposed that sin. And scripture says that the strength of sin is the law. Because if there was no law of do not be covetous, how would I know that I am covetous when I do that? If there was no law, then there would be no sin. But because there was law, it exposed the sin that was present in me. It is not the law that is the problem. It is me that needs a savior. Grace coming through Jesus Christ is our means of justification before God. But till today, a lot of believers are still trying to justify themselves by trying to keep the law. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 15, there was a little argument about keeping the law to be saved where the apostles had to meet in a place to agree if this was right before God or not. And Peter answered them and said, Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of the Gentiles a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors have been able to bear? No, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved just as they are. Peter says this is a yoke of bondage and it's the same thing that Paul referred to in Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 that we should stand in the liberty that Christ has given us and not be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul calls the law the ministry of death and the ministry of condemnation written and engraved in stones. He was speaking about the Ten Commandments. So if you try to be justified by the Ten Commandments, you have fallen from grace. And that will be the major cause that you fall deeper into sin and struggle in sin without finding a way out. The way out is Jesus Christ, where the scripture says there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You have fallen from grace if you deny your birthright. The truth is your new birth is through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and your birthright is the grace of God. That is your privilege to be given this new nature that you have. And we are not sinners because we commit sin. We are sinners because of the sin of Adam. That is where sin originated. And we took on this sin nature. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, God demonstrated his love for us and sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. And through Jesus, we have received the grace of God to be saved and our position and our stand with God changed. That is the place of our justification. And if you deny this birthright that Christ has died for you, and through the grace of God you are made right with God, you are fallen from grace. So the sin of unbelief in the grace of God is what makes you fall from grace. It is just as if you are given this gift freely, and you take it for granted, reject it, and deny it. He saw the son of Isaac, saw his birthright, and took it for granted. He even said, what is this birthright to me? That is how some people treat the grace of God. Because some people feel like on their own, they can be right with God. The scripture says, look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Make sure no one is immoral or godless like Esau, who traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single meal. Today, people are trading their birthright 
which is God's grace. And the Bible calls such people immoral and godless because trading God's grace and not being able to receive it places you in a place of unbelief. And grace is not a topic nor a teaching. Grace is a person. It is the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt with us, the one and only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is Jesus. And so scripture says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Even Paul Apostle, when he was speaking in Galatians 2, says, I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. For if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. If you deny your birthright, you've fallen away from God's grace. And grace is your birthright. It is your privilege to know God more. It is your privilege to be acquainted with God. It is your privilege to go to heaven. You have fallen from grace if you have self-righteousness. The Bible says that our righteousnesses are like filthy rags because we all are like an unclean thing before God. So by the time you feel like, God, just give me a little time and I'll make it up to you. You have already gotten it all wrong. If any man would have been able to get it right with God, Christ would not die. If there was any righteous acts that you would have pulled up or anyone would have pulled up, God would not send his son to die. But he sent his son because no man could keep the law. And scriptures say, God saved you by his grace when you believe. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. If you want a reason to boast, you have to boast that your salvation is a gift from God. You have to boast in the fact that you don't have righteousness of yourself, but your righteousness is that that Christ has bequeathed to you. You are righteous through Jesus Christ. So the ignorance of trying to live in self-righteousness by your effort and your performances is what keeps people under the bondage and the yoke of sin such that they feel like somehow they will come out of it by their willpower. And they are like, God, just give me one more chance and I'll make it up to you. And you may start making empty promises to God. I will never sin again. I will never fail you again. You don't need to make any of those empty promises to God. God knows that you don't have the ability on your own to stay away from sin. But the only way you can stay away from sin is if you come under the canopy of God's grace. For scripture says, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Titus 2.11 says, For the grace of God has appeared. That means this is a person bringing salvation to everyone who believes. And it goes on to say that this grace will teach us to deny ungodliness, to deny all kinds of evil, so that we can have this hope of heaven, the hope of acquaintance with God, the hope of eternal life. It is through the grace of God. So grace is the antidote for sin. And sin cannot stop the flow of God's grace. So by the time somebody tells you, if you sin, you're falling away from God's grace. That is not the gospel. Sin cannot stop you from receiving God's grace. If you find yourself failing and sinning, you need to receive the grace of God. Grace is not something to achieve. It is a gift to receive. And if you find yourself in a place of destitution, powerlessness, to be able to let go of your sin, just go to God. God, I need your grace. God, I receive your grace. God, I believed in the finished work of your son, Jesus. God, I believed in all that Jesus had done. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I receive the grace to overcome this sin. So in conclusion, to fall from grace is to try to be justified by the law, to deny grace, which is your birthright, and to try to have self-righteousness, which is, God, I want you to judge me or treat me according to my works. I want you to treat me according to my performance, according to my effort. And you don't need to be in such place. If you have found yourself there, God's grace through Jesus is available for you to receive as a gift. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it has been a blessing to you. I would like you to share the video to other people, your friends and family, and give it a thumbs up so that YouTube algorithm will make this message go to a broader audience. Thank you so much for being a part of this channel. I am Uwe Mekwan. This is my YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button. See you in the next video. Bye.